All right, so now that we know how to recognize significant figures in a number, we can look at a couple examples here. So each of these numbers, we want to think about how many significant figures are represented by each of them. So 358, all non-zero, that would be three significant figures. 0, 0, 0, 0. 0.054, those zeros are to the left. Those are not significant figures, but the 5 and the 4 would be. So that is 2. 6.3050, we've got a trapped 0 and then a 0 to the right, but the number has a decimal place in it, so that 0 is going to count as well. So all 5 of those digits would count as significant figures. 0 0.0105. Um, again, a trap zero here, but these two zeros are to the left of the first non-zero digit. So this would be three. This zero counts, those zeros don't count. 350.00, um, all of those zeros are to the right in a number with a decimal, so they all would count. That would be five. And then 307.080, a trap zero, and a zero to the right in a number with a decimal. Those would all count as well that would be six. Now, one of the reasons that significant figures is going to be important is because the precision in the measurement, or how many significant figures are represented in a measurement, will often affect a calculation that we then subsequently do with that data or that information. So we want to look at what would happen when we do different types of calculations. So there are rules for how significant figures interact in terms of calculations, right? In this case, we're gonna look at one rule for adding and subtracting, a separate rule for multiplying and dividing. So we'll kind of have to keep track of what mathematical operation we're doing because that will affect how we need to treat our data, okay? So for adding and subtracting, the rule is the place where significance ends in the data is the place where it must end in the answer. Right, and I have a, a little example here we can evaluate. So if I look at my set of data here, 20.42, the significance here ends two places past the decimal or the hundredths place. My second piece of data is 1.322. Right, significance ends here three places past the decimal, right, or 10 hundred thousandths place. Right, but my last piece of data, 83.1, the last significant digit is in the tenths place. So in this piece of data, significance ends at the tenths place. So for this entire set, we would have to say significance ends after the tenths place. And there's a reason why I stacked them up like this, because a helpful way to think about this is we can imagine a line right there, right, that comes in right where significance ends in whichever piece of data had significance end first, right, or furthest place to the left. That's where we're going to have to round our answers. When we add all this together, 8, 4, and that would be 10, right, we've got to round wherever that line is. So I can keep 104.8 up through the tenths place. I have to get rid of everything that comes after. Since I'm at exactly 4 here, um, or I'm at four, which is less than halfway up to the next value in the tenths place, I would round this to 104.8, and that would be my answer, right? So this leads to a couple consequences. When you're adding, it's possible that you'll end up with more significant figures after an addition than before, because you could add more significant figures off to the left of your number, right? Because you could should keep the same amount over to the right. When you subtract, just the opposite is possible. You will lose some of the significant figures to the left. Right? If you subtract two numbers that are pretty close, you get a small value. You may actually end up with quite a few fewer significant figures after a subtraction. Um, the rule is different if we either multiply or divide. And for multiplying and dividing, the rule is the number of significant figures in the data will limit the significant figures in the answer. And basically the way we apply this is you count the number of significant figures in each individual piece of data. Whichever piece of data has the fewest number of significant figures, that is how you will round your answer. So in the example, 6.2241, that would be four significant figures, but we're multiplying that by 5.2, which is only two significant figures. And that means this answer should be just two significant figures. So when I multiply this out, 6.221 times 5.2, 
my calculator says 32.3492, right? But it's up to us to evaluate the significant figures. And since we're limited to two, we can only keep the first two. We keep one here in the tens and one here in the ones place. So our answer here should just be 32. Okay, now one other difference here with multiplying and dividing, you do have to be very careful about your units because units will multiply along with the numbers or they'll be divided by each other along with the numbers. So this would be 32 square centimeters because we'd have to multiply our units as well. We didn't have any units up here for the adding. You really can only add numbers if they're already in the same units. So whatever you're adding together, your answer would have the same units. Same is true for subtraction. You have to have the same units to subtract. That is not true when you multiply or divide. So you'll also have to factor in how the units go along with a multiplication or a division. Okay, let's look at a few examples here. So the first one here on the next page is an addition. And we said addition is limited by place. So the first a uh, piece of data here, 12.0550, that goes four places past the decimal, but the second one goes two places past the decimal, and that means our answer is going to be limited to two places past the decimal. So if I add these together, 12.0550 plus 9.05, what I get on my calculator is 21.105. Now, where I have to round to, though, is to this place right here, which means I've got to drop whatever's in this next place. Now, this is an issue that actually I've seen vary with textbooks. Um, some cases you're told if you see a five, you round up, right? And that's okay. If that was the case in a problem we had, I would certainly accept that answer. Um, but in some cases, particularly if you have a really large data set, Rounding up a lot could actually skew your information. So in a lot of textbooks, um, when your number that you're dropping is exactly five, you round either up or down so that you end up with an even number. So if that was the rule, we would round this to 21.10 because instead of rounding up to a one, you round down to a zero. That way, half the time you round up, half the time you round down if what you're dropping is exactly five, right? Now, for this class, we're not going that deep into evaluation kind of of the statistics of the data set. So I would accept in a case like this, rounding up or rounding down if it's kind of right in the center like that, where you have to drop a number, but you don't know quite which one it might be. Okay, the second example here is also, I'm gonna follow the same rule because it's a subtraction. The first piece of data ends one place past the decimal or the tenths place. The other one goes three places past the decimal. And that means our answer's gotta stop one place past the decimal. So 257.2 subtract 19.789. And my calculator says 237.411. Um, but again, we're evaluating our data. We've got to stop there at the tens place. So in this case, it's, it's a little clearer. We just drop those hanging ones, the end of the number. The answer here should be 237.4. Okay, next example is a division. So you've got your divide sign there. 0 0.0577, that would be three sig figs, right? Since those zeros are to the right. 0.753, that would also be three sig figs. So this answer, after we do that division, should be three significant figures. So 0 0.0577 divided by 0.753. And calculator says 0 0.0766268. And actually the calculator keeps going, but that's enough for us to figure out how to round our answer. Now we have three significant figures. Zero there, that doesn't count as a significant figure. Zero there does not count as a significant figure. The first significant digit we hit is here, the seven. So I can keep that seven. I can keep this six. And I can keep this six. That would mean I drop everything further. And since that's a two, I don't have to round up. So 0 0.0766 is what we should report for the answer here for this one. Um, so. That can be a little tricky. Um, in fact, this is a common mistake. People will count this zero 
because it's to one side of the decimal and this one because it's to the other side of the decimal. That's not an issue when the zeros are to the left. Neither of those counts as a significant figure. Okay, we're creeping up on about where the video should stop. So we'll cut off right there. I'll pick up with those two in the next video.